Second Samuel 3, And the fighting between the house of Shaul and the house of Dod was long drawn out. But Dod grew stronger and stronger, and the house of Shaul grew weaker and weaker. And sons were born to Dod in Kebron. And his firstborn was Amnon, by Akinoam the Israelitess. And his second, Kilab, by Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. And the third, Absalom, son of Maka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. And the fourth, Adunia, son of Kagath. And the fifth, Shepatia, son of Abital. And the sixth, Yithrim, by Daud's Asha Egla. These were born to Daud in Kebron. And it came to be, while there was fighting between the house of Shaul and the house of Daud, that Abner was strengthening himself in the house of Shaul. And Shaul had a concubine, whose name was Ritzpah, daughter of Aya. And Aishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? And Abner was very displeased at the words of Aishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Yehuda? that I show kindness to the house of Shaul your father, to his brothers, and to his friends today, and have not let you fall into the hand of Daud, that you charge me today with a sin concerning this Asha. Elohim does so to Abner, and more also, if I do not do for Daud, as Yahuwah has sworn to him, to cause the rain to pass over from the house of Shaul, and to raise up the throne of Daud, over Yisrael and over Yahuda, from Dan to Barsheba. And he was unable to answer Abner another word, because he feared him. And Abner sent messengers on his behalf to Dod, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make your covenant with me, and see, my hand is with you to bring all Yisrael to you. And Dod said, Good, I make a covenant with you. Only one matter I am asking of you. You do not see my face unless you first bring Michal, daughter of Shaul, when you come to see my face. Dod then sent messengers to Aishbosheth, son of Shaul, saying, Give me my Asha Michal, to whom I became engaged for a hundred foreskins of the Philish team. And Aishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, from Paltial, son of Laish. But her husband went with her to Bakurim, going on and weeping behind her. And Abner said to him, Go, turn back. And he turned back. And Abner had a word with the elders of Yisrael, saying, In time past you were seeking for Dod to be king over you. And now do it. For Yahuwah has spoken of Dod, saying, By the hand of my servant Dod, I save my people, Yisrael, from the hand of of the Philishtim, and the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin. And Abner also went to speak in the hearing of Dod in Kebron, all that seemed good to Yisharal and all the house of Benjamin. And Abner and twenty men with him came to Dod at Kebron. And Dod made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. And Abner said to Dod, let me arise and go, and gather all Yisharal to my Aduni the king, and let them make a covenant with you, and you shall reign over all that your being desires. And Dod sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And see the servants of Daud and Yuab came from a raid, and brought much spoil with them. But Abner was not with Daud in Kebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. And Yuab and all the army that was with him came, and they reported to Yuab, saying, Abner son of Ner came to the king, and he sent him away, and he has gone in peace. And Yuab went to the king and said, What have you done? See, Abner has come to you. Why is it that you sent him away and he has already gone? You know that Abner son of Ner came to deceive you, to know your going out and your coming in, and to know all that you are doing. Yuab then left Dod, and he sent messengers after Abner, who brought him back from the well of Sirah. But Dod did not know it. Thus Abner returned to Kebron, and Yuab took him aside in the gate to speak with him privately, and there struck him in the stomach, 
so that he died for the blood of Asahal, his brother. And when Dodd heard it afterwards, he said, My reign and I are guiltless before Yahuwah, forever of the blood of Abner, son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Yuab and on all his father's house. And let there never fail to be in the house of Yuab one who has a discharge, or is a leper, who leans on a staff, or falls by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Yuab and Abishai his brother slew Abner, because he had killed their brother Asahal at Gibeon in the battle. And Dod said to Yuab and to all the people who were with him, Tear your garments, gird yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn for Abner. And King Dod followed the coffin, and they buried Abner in Kebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king sang a lament over Abner and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into shackles. As one falls before sons of evil, so you fell. And all the people wept over him again. And all the people came to cause Dodd to eat food while it was still day. But Dodd swore, saying, Allahim do so to me, and more also, if I taste bread or whatever else till the sun goes down. And all the people took note of it, and it was good in their eyes, since whatever the king did was good in the eyes of all the people. And all the people and all Yisharal knew that day that it had not been the king's intent to kill Abner son of Ner. The king also said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great one has fallen in Yisharal today? And I am weak today, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Tseruya, are too harsh for me. Let Yahweh repay the evildoer according to his evil.